Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Sully is the new film in which a massively overqualified team, including Clint Eastwood and Tom Hanks, bring to life the true story of the miracle on the Hudson, a miraculous water landing by heroic pilot Chesley Sully Sullenberger that saved the lives of 155 people when multiple bird strikes crippled the engines of a U.S. Airways flight from New York to Charlotte in January of 2009. The story of that amazing flight and the subsequent landing you just knew it when you heard about it, that it would make for a terrific movie sequence if adapted for the big screen with top-notch special effects and IMAX cameras and Oscar-winning actors, and it does. It is also pretty much a self-contained story, so it's just not enough to fill a whole movie. Stories, especially those written for the screen, need a central conflict that has to stretch for the length of the movie. Clint Eastwood, one of our most dependable visual storytellers, does an admirable job at embellishing the material to stretch to a scant 95 minutes long. His shortest film ever, by the way. But the story can be boiled down to just three major beats. Man, Sully was awesome. Wait, was he really awesome? Yeah, he was pretty awesome. And those three beats do not make for a compelling overall story. What is compelling, and compelling enough to recommend the movie anyway, is the recreation of that flight. Everything that depicts the actual flight itself is moving, inspiring, and gripping stuff. And when talents like Tom Hanks and Clint Eastwood are involved, you can easily overlook that there's simply not much other story to tell. That's it for the capsule review, let's get in depth. The key line in Sully, the one that's emblematic of the film as a whole, is spoken in the movie's trailer. Here it is. I've delivered a million passengers over 40 years in the air, but in the end, I'm gonna be judged on 208 seconds. 208 seconds. That's the duration of the flight that made history. Such a short span of time to cover, and cover it, Eastwood does, from showing us multiple visions of what could have happened if it had gone wrong, to flashbacks to the various passengers boarding the plane, to showing us the entire scene unfolding within the air traffic control center, to showing us the first responders before, during, and after the rescue, to showing us random people reacting in Manhattan office buildings, conjuring up horrible visual knee-jerk associations with 9-11, to finally seeing the entire flight unfold from the view of the cockpit. We see those same 208 seconds play out multiple times because really that's the story we came to see and that's where the film justifies the ticket price because from each perspective from every angle it's gripping each and every time but never forget the movie is called Sully which is both the nickname of the movie's titular pilot hero and a word which means to stain or tarnish so it's rather poetic that the film ruins the purity of this rather potent story by sullying it with more Sully just to fill out the running time to feature length. So as a result, we get Sully having nightmares about crashing planes. We get two flashbacks to a younger Sully learning to fly and then handling crisis during wartime that go nowhere. We get Sully jogging through Times Square while listening to news broadcasts about how awesome Sully was. We get Sully being praised by hotel managers, Katie Couric, Katie Couric's producer, bartenders, and his first officer all in their own separate scenes. We get Academy Award nominee Laura Linney literally phoning in her performance as she gets called by Sully at various times during his press tour slash Inquisition, just to tell him that he's really awesome and she's really proud of her. Sully, watch the news. You're a hero. And everyone's gonna have to get used to it, including the NTSB. She even appears in flashback on the day of the miracle on the Hudson, but even then, only on the phone. The only thing of note that occurs in the movie besides the flight, though it's hardly dynamic enough to consider the movie's core conflict, is the NTSB inquest of Sully after the fact, and the lingering questions about whether Sully could have gone back to the airport and if he acted recklessly in landing the plane on the Hudson River. This panel of party poopers crop up every now and again to try to inject some kind of conflict into the narrative by <clears throat> sullying his reputation, but their scenes only amount to a lot of hand-wringing until we get another great flashback to the miracle on the Hudson. And that's really where I want to leave you with this review. The story of that fateful flight is told in riveting fashion. It's quick, it's realistic, and it plays, oh, does it play, right to the cheap seats. Quick aside about that, there's a point in this movie where one character says to Sully, you know, it's been a long time since this city had some good news, especially with a plane in it. And this woman right behind me said, oh, 9-11. Yes, yes, 9-11, that's what he meant. <sighs> anyway, when the plan lands on the water and doesn't blow up, the passengers, the first officer, even Sully himself, which, look, Tom Hanks proves once again that he's a national treasure here, he disappears into the role, down to his thick, meaty hands. He just vanishes. There's no way that this guy on the screen is the same guy as astronaut Jim Lovell or even Captain Phillips. His transformation is astounding in its simplicity. Anyway, upon landing, the entirety of that plane, along with the entirety of the audience, which applauded at the screening I attended, gets this huge, palpable whoosh of relief. It's just incredible to behold. 
the subsequent rescue from the frigid Hudson River by the crew and the first responders, it's all rendered in incredible detail and you really get swept away in the simple heroism of regular, hard-working, noble people all just trying to survive, man. And I've gotta say that even when cushioned by all the fluff around it, there is a dynamite 45-minute movie here. Certainly a medium bag's worth of entertainment value, this movie actually has a lot in common with Robert Zemeckis' 3D IMAX attraction, The Walk, from last year. You simply did not need Oscar winners Clint Eastwood and Tom Hanks to tell this story. You didn't need 90 whole minutes to tell the story of those 208 seconds, but having big names like Tom Hanks and Clint Eastwood and having a movie that runs at feature length was necessary to secure the budget required to render this miraculous flight in stunning detail. So if that's what it took to give us the story of the miracle on the Hudson on the big screen, then I'm not gonna complain about it. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. Please let me know what you thought of Sully in the comments below, because I always love to hear what you guys think. Regardless, if you enjoyed this show, click the thumbs up icon below and visit our channel by clicking the icon right down there. And hit that old subscribe button for more reviews each and every week. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and we know you have many choices in online movie reviewers, and we thank you for flying movies at pop.